In wartime, doctors learn quick that you can't save them all. I call it triage. You, you can't save them all, so you do what you can with what you have wherever you are. And in the case of Dr. Henry Beecher, it's Northern Africa. It's World War II. His mass unit is isolated from supply lines and he's running desperately short of morphine. But the wounded keep coming. So he gets creative. And he decides to inject an unknowing soldier with salt water instead. Clearly no medicinal value. But he notices that the man seems to enjoy some sense of relief nonetheless. And for Beecher, it's a eureka moment. He'll come back from the war and he'll study the phenomenon. He'll publish a paper called The Powerful Placebo that'll change the course of modern medicine. He'll come to be known as the modern father of the placebo effect, even though he didn't coin the term and he actually wasn't the first doctor to observe it. And in the 60, almost 60 years now since that was published, uh, placebo is certainly a cornerstone of medicine and maybe not a household word, but certainly something that we all know about. But why? What is it about mind over matter? What is it about suggestion providing relief and in a broader context that expectation can guide experience? And what's really interesting is how we can apply it beyond medicine. And to that point, I'd like you all to close your eyes with me for a second and create in your mind the image of someone exercising. Maybe it's your favorite athlete. Maybe it's, um, uh, I don't know, somebody exercising next to you at the gym. What are they doing? What do they look like? Imagine their muscle tone. Now, as you open your eyes, tell me, did anybody envision a hotel housekeeper? Anyone? Not one single hand going up for those of you following on the stream. That's because we don't think of hotel housekeepers as exercising. And neither do they, according to a study uh, that looked into the placebo effect and how it goes beyond medicine. What they did was they took 84 maids and they separated them. Before they separated into two groups, they, they did the measurements. They, they, they measured their weight and they measured body fat, therefore body mass index. And they, uh, they did uh, all the different measurements. And then they separated the maids into two groups. One group was given valuable information that what you're doing is exercise. I want to point out, it's not that they were being told that you need to work harder, but just that what you're doing already is exercise. The other group was told nothing. Now, what do you think happened after eight weeks? The group that knew they were exercising actually lost weight, they slimmed down, and they enjoyed the benefits of that exercise. Those who knew nothing didn't. That's fascinating. It challenges our notion of the placebo effect. And that's the bold idea that I would like to share with you here today. That the placebo effect isn't all in your head. It's not sugar pills and uh, trickery. And just like those maids, we can use it to manifest change in our life in a positive way without any trickery. Now, I'll be the first to point out, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a scientist. But I use this in my day-to-day -day running an ad agency. See, my clients hire me to reframe expectations and use that to guide experience every day. Uh, I have a car dealer in Canada, for example. He's not the traditional car dealer with the sandy lot and the trailer out back. This guy's got a five-acre campus. He's got inside, it looks more like an Apple store than a car dealership. And he's known for legendary service. He's also kind of huggable, if you want to know the truth. But if I don't point out to people, if I don't help tell that story, they're just going to lump him in with every other car dealer, right? So I'm paid to reframe people's expectations. And I'll tell you how you can do it in your life as well. It's real simple. I'll give you my two secrets for how you can generate a positive placebo effect in your life and in the life of people around you. Real simple. Ready? Power of words, the power of words, and the sound of the human voice. The power of words and the sound of the human voice. Use the power of words to paint vivid mental images and then use the sound of the human voice to carry that message and to reframe their expectations and allow them to imagine possibilities that don't yet exist, okay? Think about all the ways that this comes up in our lives, okay? Um, think about interpersonal, uh, the, 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 the carefully choreographed act of human courtship, for example, okay? Uh, we're attracted to beautiful people, sure. But the people who sweep us off our feet are the ones that allow us to imagine a future is better with them in it than the one that they're not in, right? Consider the political election that we're in the middle of right now. Do you think that those guys are using a placebo effect to reframe our expectations? Sure they are. They're using the media and advertising to let us know what the next four years will be like if we just give them our vote. What about the economy? 
uh, you know, in the economy, we hear on, the, on television and through all the pundits, hey, the economy's strong, then what happens? We invest. And what happens when we invest? The economy gets stronger, right? And the flip side is true as well. And it really goes, uh, runs the gamut. It's really everywhere in life. But you know, I told you you could lead a better life by applying this. So, you know, I want you to think about a few examples in this little bit of time I have left of ways that you can apply it in your life. And I guess the first piece of advice that I'll give you is that this idea of expectation guiding experience, it works. But expectation can be a very, very slippery slope as well, okay? You've got Tiger Mom over here saying, let's get our expectations sky high and our kids will soar with the eagles. But as Despair.com reminds us, not everybody gets to be an astronaut when they grow up, you know? And, uh, you know, on the flip side, I was talking about uh, interpersonal relations and dating. You know, anybody who's been on online dating sites know that technology is changing in a way that you can meet so many people so quick. And it gets to the point where a lot of people are like, well, I'll just have no expectations at all, and that way I'll never be disappointed. But see, that's not going to work either, because if you set your expectations that low, you set the bar that low, that's liable to be what you end up with, you know? So what can you do? Well, in business, I can give you a piece of advice. Uh, if you've ever been to Disneyland, I mean, is there a place on the planet that sets higher expectations than a kid going to Disneyland for the first time, right? And they always nail it. You know, you never seem to hear that the parade was late or, uh, you know, Mickey was having a bad day that day, right? You never hear that. Disney actually has a leadership academy where they train people. Set your expectations as high as you can and then consistently exceed them by 1%. If you're in business, that's great advice. But what about on a personal level? What can we do with all this? See, the truth is, is the world frames our expectations whether we like it or not. Kids on the playground with their fragile self-image, you know. And uh, we go into toxic workplaces where pretty soon that deep cultural memory tells us this is what's expected of you. And everybody gets in step, you know. But as, as parents and as leaders in business, we have an opportunity to change all that. By using the power of language to create vivid mental image, you can use the human voice to reframe those expectations. You have a chance to make a positive change in people's lives. See, the people in your life there, you know, uh, they're a lot like those maids. You know, they need to hear it. They need to hear you tell them that what they're doing in the world is good and true. And if you do that, then you can be like Dr. Beecher on the battlefield, on the battleground that is the world all around you. You can't save all of them, right? But you can do what you can with what you have where you are, which is right here. And if you do that, your positive placebo can provide comfort and encouragement and maybe even spread a little happiness. Thank you. Thank <clears> you. <throat>